Week 12 of the NFL season has concluded with the Baltimore Ravens defeating the LA Chargers. We are going to be looking ahead at my week 13 power rankings. A weird gap from like the middle of the league just feels very congested still. I think we got a clear top 10. I think we've got a clear bottom 10. But in the middle, it's very congested. So it's going to be really interesting to see what you guys think down in the comment section below. But before we get into it, consider hitting that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. We've had an incredible week this past week. If you guys enjoy college football content, stay tuned because we're going to have a bunch of prospect spotlights coming this weekend, as well as conference championship previews for the Power Four conferences. So once we get the clinching games for the Big 12, the ACC, the Big 10, and the SEC, we're going to be doing preview videos on each and every one of those games. And check out my Patreon, where for $5 a month, you guys will get exclusive access to my draft guide, as well as getting to participate in weekly polls and other fun stuff over there, if you guys do enjoy. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let's get into it at number 32, where we've got the New York football Giants. They fall to 2-9 and on the season, and the Giants just can't seem to catch a break. Haven't really done a video about the Giants since they released Daniel Jones, but want to talk about that really quick because I think that was a complete and utter disaster. I mean, I don't want to talk about Saquon Barkley to Giants fans because I know it's still a bit of a sensitive subject, but they paid Daniel Jones over Saquon Barkley. And Daniel Jones is no longer on the team right now. And if you're going to cut Daniel Jones, I get it. I mean, I would have waited. I would have kept him on the roster and waited because the cap hit wouldn't have been so large. But if you're going to bench him, why aren't you playing Drew Locke? I think Drew Locke is still a serviceable quarterback in this league. He's shown some flashes, and he's shown the upside to be a good starter in the NFL. If I'm Brian Dable, I'm furious right now because Tommy DeVito's starting. He doesn't give them a chance to win. They're not winning any games with Tommy DeVito. Now you're kind of stuck, and there's a very real chance that he could lose his job as well as Joe Shane. I think both of those guys are, their seats are scorching hot right now because I don't really think that they have a choice to be completely honest. I think this is a deliberate tank from the Giants front office and it's a disaster. Now, defensively, they were awful in this game. They could not stop the rushing attack of Tampa Bay. I believe they only had 20 pressures as a team the entire game which is completely and utterly unacceptable. They have so many holes on the defensive side of the ball, but the offense is just sad. You look at the running game. I like Tyrone Tracy, but he got benched for fumbling in this game, which that makes no sense. I I, I think Malik Neighbors could be a star in this league, but they have no talent on the offensive line right now with Andrew Thomas out. The defense is still a disaster. The quarterback is a disaster. And this Giants team is one of the most dysfunctional franchises in all of football right now. And I got them at number 32. Got absolutely destroyed by Tampa Bay. They Nothing changed in my perspective of the Giants. At number 31, it is the Las Vegas Raiders. Can they? I think this team's trying to get rid of Gardner Minshew in some way. He seems to have gotten benched or hurt in seemingly every other game at all year for this team. And it seems like he's out for a significant period of time. Aiden O'Connell's coming back to practice. They've been linked to Daniel Jones, but Daniel Jones doesn't want to go play for Vegas. He wants to play for a playoff contender in case there's an injury, which good on him. But the Raiders are just a mess right now. I I, I haven't, I mean, truthfully, I don't, I haven't watched much of the Raiders all season long. They're not bringing any excitement onto the field Brock Bowers is still doing incredible things for this team week in and week out. I think he's number seven in the league in receiving yards. He's been incredible for them. But Gardner Minshew has been a disaster. Aiden O'Connell's been bad for them as well. I think quarterback as a whole has just been really messy for Vegas. And then I don't really think you're getting much from the defense either. I don't think they've been all that impressive. Bo Nix had another incredible passing game on this secondary and Yeah, I'm not really moved by this Raiders team. I think they're the second worst team in football right now. I got them at number 31. At number 30, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars staying where they're at. We talked about it last week. I'm still genuinely in shock that Doug Peterson is still the head coach of the Jaguars this week. 
Last week, I thought he would have been fired after they got completely embarrassed by the Detroit Lions. It didn't end up happening. He's still the head coach, and apparently he's made some internal moves that he wants to keep under wraps. Okay, Doug, this team has been the biggest disappointment in all of football this year, I think, because I think a lot of people thought Jacksonville could win eight or nine games this year. The talent is certainly there. I I think Trevor Lawrence is good. Brian Thomas Jr. has been electric for this team when he's had the ball in his hands. You look at the moves that they made, adding Eric Armstead, improving the secondary a little bit, and you're like, okay, this Jags team can make some noise. And they've just been – every bad scenario that could happen to this team has happened. The offensive line has disappointed. Trevor Lawrence seems to have regressed from where we thought he was coming into the year. The receivers cannot stop getting banged up. Gabe Davis is out. Christian Kirk is out. And the defense just hasn't been good. They play a lot of man coverage, and it shows because they get beat each and every week. I don't know what's going on with Jacksonville. I think you've got to go with a coaching change first and foremost, which is yet to happen. But they were on a bye this week. Luckily for Jags fans, they didn't have to watch this team. But nothing changed for me this week. I still think they are number 30 and one of the worst teams in all of football. At number 29, we've got the New England Patriots. They dropped three spots. This is a team that I, I sipped the Kool-Aid a little bit. I thought Drake May had looked really good, which no, nothing against Drake May. He did look good, but this team's just not there. They're not ready to take that next jump. Christian Gonzalez was like the only impactful player this game. I thought coaching was horrendous all day long. Stupid decisions from Gerard Mayo that kind of put this team behind the sticks and they weren't able to really make anything happen. The lack of weapons in New England, I think, really shows, though. I think... Drake May doesn't have his go-to guy yet. He, he's trying to get the ball to Pop Douglas a lot. And Pop Douglas is a fine receiver as like a number two or number three at best. That can't be your number one. Jalen Polk has been a big disappointment for them. And that that pains me. I think I was wrong on Jalen Polk. I thought he would be a little bit better than what he has been. Uh, he's just been a mess for this Patriots team. The offensive line has also been a mess, which I think we all knew coming into the year. But I didn't know if we thought it would be like this. What I will say, Javon Baker not getting really many snaps for New England. A bit of a surprise to me. He's a guy a lot of people liked pre-draft. And I still think he's got some juice. He could be a player here. But he's not seen the field much. And Drake May didn't have a good game. He was under pressure a lot. The receivers were letting him down. And the coaching wasn't really giving him favorable opportunities. So they dropped three spots. I don't think this is a great football team by any means. But... There is promise. I think Patriots fans should still feel hopeful about what they've got going forward into next year because it looks like you've got your franchise quarterback in Drake May. At number 28, we got the Dallas Cowboys jumping up three spots. And I know a lot of Cowboys fans are like, oh, we're four and seven. We we just beat the commanders. Why do you have us at 28? Let's just talk about how they won this game. It was special teams errors from Washington, and it was special team uh successes from Dallas which not not discrediting that at all but I I think if you look at this if you look at this Cowboys team this wasn't a game that they should have won the offense was Cooper Rush on paper looked great the offense they moved the ball okay it didn't really feel like this was a game that the offense was scoring points 14 of their points came off of special teams you had the kick return uh by Kevontae Turpin for a touchdown, which is one of the highlights of the season. Then you had the onside kick return for another touchdown, which, by the way, was the stupidest decision of the week. Why didn't whoever got that go down? Because, yes, you won the game, but they gave Washington more light than they deserved. This just isn't a good football team, and that's okay. They're 4-7. and seven. They beat Washington in a very strange game, and – I don't trust Cooper Rush at quarterback. I don't care if it's Cooper Rush, Trey Lance, or Daniel Jones. I don't trust this team. Now, yes, they've got a game coming up against the Giants where they'll probably win and they'll probably jump up a little bit more. But I I don't think anyone's looking at this Dallas team and sees them as a threat. Now, they played well. The defense was flying around. But you also got to think that was against Dan Quinn. Maybe it was a bit of a rivalry game for them. I'm not sold on this Cowboys team. I I didn't see anything from them that's like, oh, maybe I was too low on them. I'll jump them up. I'll give them their flowers. But I still think there are some issues to be had with this team. And number 27, we've got the Carolina Panthers. 
they fall to three and eight, but that has to be the most encouraging loss a Panthers fan could suffer probably in the last three to four seasons because Bryce Young is back. Alabama Bryce Young, number one overall pick Bryce Young. He is all the way back. And the game that he had against Kansas City, he was incredible in this game. This is a Chiefs defense that is one of the best units in all of football. He looked confident, comfortable, was throwing with touch and accuracy to all three levels of the field. I mean, go back and watch the All-22 from this game. Bryce Young was amazing all day long. They were getting impact from the run game. Chubba Hubbard has been a really impactful player offensively. Adam Thielen's back in the offense. He's making plays for him, and they've got an offense right now. I think Dave Canales has done a heck of a job these last few weeks at getting this team back on track because everyone was talking about the Panthers potentially being back in the quarterback market. I don't think anyone's having those conversations this week because Bryce Young looked legit. On top of that, I think the offensive line has been much improved. Robert Hunt, Damian Lewis, the moves that they made in the offseason to improve Bryce Young have paid off, and they have been getting incredible results the last few weeks. I think if you're a Panthers fan, you feel more excited about this team than you have in years because Bryce Young looks like your quarterback of the future. You feel good about the receivers that you have. I still think you'll add a piece or two to kind of continue to beef it up because I like Xavier Leggett. I like Adam Thielen. I don't know. I think you need a little bit more of a gadget speed type of guy. They looked really good, though, against the Chiefs, who were one of the five best teams in football, have only lost one game. They went toe-to-toe with that Chiefs team. They lost to some of the Chiefs' black magic, but really impressive stuff from Bryce Young. The, The fans were in it. And I think the Panthers are kind of being undervalued right now because the last four weeks, I think this has been a good football team. At number 26, we've got the Tennessee Titans. They jump up two. Um, A good win against the Texans. Their defense is really what's selling me on this team. I, I don't think this is a good football team, but we talked about it a little bit last week. I think this defense is really making plays. Arden Key, Jeffrey Simmons, Tavondre Sweat, their front is creating a push. They're creating pressure, and they're wreaking havoc on quarterbacks. I mean, C.J. Stroud really, really struggled in this game. Jarvis Brownlee, who was a player that I was really low on coming into the draft, I thought he was way too physical. He's been really impressive for them as one of the top corners in the class, and they're getting great play from the defense. Now, offensively, Tony Pollard is running the ball really effectively. They're getting great plays from him. And I think Will Levis is throwing the football well. We'll talk about some of the issues here in a second, but Will Levis is playing with more timing. He's playing with more comfort, and he's hitting receivers at all three levels. The deep ball is starting to connect. He, he did have his patented one bad interception a game. So you'll start asking yourself those questions. My only question with Will Levis right now, and I'm sure there will be more to come in the coming weeks, but – Will Levis pocket presence, and it's going to be a discussion all week long. The pocket presence is bad. It's really bad. And you can blame the offensive line all you want, but a lot of these sacks he's taking are a result of his poor pocket presence. He's rolling back into pressure. It was an issue for him at Kentucky, and it followed him to the league. The offensive line's not great. J.C. Latham had a pretty bad game. The offensive line wasn't great. I think he was sacked eight times in this game. So, Obviously, all the blame is not on him, but the pocket presence is an issue that has shown up time and time again when you watch Will Levis's tape that I think needs to improve. I had them jumping up too. I think their defense is playing well. They've been a scrappy team the last few weeks. I don't think they're great by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely worth jumping up after a pretty big win, first win in the division against the Texans. At number 25, we've got the New York Jets. I don't know what more is to be said about the Jets that hasn't been said already. They fired GM Joe Douglas since the last time we did one of these, which at some point we got a point to the common denominator here. Robert Sala was fired. You trade for Devontae Adams. You you change offensive coordinators. You change general managers. Nothing is changing, New York, until Woody Johnson sells this team I don't think anything's changing. And you've got some pretty damning reports from Diana Rossini and other insiders inside the building that uh, that Woody Johnson has just been a horrible owner for this team. 
He's way too hands-on. Apparently, he called for Rodgers to be benched after the Broncos game. I mean, it's just been a complete and utter disaster. And they're at 25 because they're the most talented roster still maybe in the league. If you go player for player on this roster, this on paper is still one of the more talented rosters in football. Talent doesn't mean anything or doesn't mean everything when you've got an owner like Woody Johnson who is running a complete crapshoot. But I can't quite sell this Jets team. I, I still think I would take them over all the other teams we mentioned so far because you still do have some of those players that are just difference makers. And I think if you put Aaron Rodgers on any one of those teams, except maybe the Panthers and Patriots, they're better teams today. And they just are. If you put those receivers there, they're better teams. I, I think there's a talented roster. They've still got pieces. The schedule gets easier for them. I, I don't think they're making a playoff run by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm keeping them at 25. They were on a bye week. Uh, and it seemed like even on the bye week, it went about as poorly as you could expect. And people are thinking Rodgers could get cut. Who would have had that on their New York Jets bingo card? It's just been a wild season for the Jets. And that's why they're at number 25. At number 24, we got the Chicago Bears. Once again, Caleb Williams was out of his mind in this game against Minnesota. Minnesota is a defense that has brought a lot of blitz. They've made a lot of plays by just pressuring the quarterback. And Caleb Williams showed what he had at USC. That pocket presence, that awareness and elusiveness to escape the pocket, get to the outside, keep his eyes downfield, make a play. All game long, he had the football on a string, throw, threading tight needles, doing the patented just floaters in, into double coverage that just land into DeAndre Swift's hands. Caleb Williams was unbelievable in this game, and it wasn't enough. I, I don't even know what more you could ask for. They rally back because Caleb Williams gets him in scoring position, and the defense just wasn't able to get a stop, even though I thought the defense played okay down the stretch. The secondary had some collapses late, but nothing to, that was a disaster. This Jet, this Bears team, yeah, there were some coaching issues for them down the stretch. You could blame Eberflus, but, I mean, they went up against a good Vikings team. They weren't able to get it done in overtime. But, again, despite me having them drop, I still feel pretty good about this Bears team. And I think I might pick them to upset the Lions on Thanksgiving because they do remind me a little bit of last year's Packers and the way that they're not playing great, but you see flashes here and there. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Bears go on a second half of the season, just completely turn it around because their offense is rejuvenized or rejuvenated. Wow. Um, with the new offensive coordinator. I, I, I definitely could see that. And let's see if they can get some momentum building. I got them at 24. At number 23, we got the New Orleans Saints. Had a great couple of weeks. Derek Carr has been one of the most effective deep ball throwers on passes 20 or more yards over the last four weeks of the season. You're getting good play from guys like Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Alvin Kamara, and Taysom Hill has been a difference maker. Obviously, Coach Darren Rizzi comes in after you fire um, – I'm blank Dennis Allen after you fired Dennis Allen. And that's been a difference maker for this team. This team has rallied. They've made plays and they've won a couple of games in a row. I'm not really ready to buy in on the Saints again. I think they killed us early on in the season, but they're a fine football team. I think they've got some players. They're going to have some big games here and there, but I, I don't think they're a playoff team. They were another team that were on a bye week, not really ready to commit to anything one way or the other with them. I got them at 23. At 22, we got the Cleveland Browns. I don't know why I'm so high on Cleveland because I shouldn't be. I, I mean, they give me no reason to be high on them ever. But this defense is still one of the best units in all of football. I said this last week. If you were to give me, like, of any of the position groups that we talked about this far – I want the Browns defense ahead of everybody. That includes offense or defense of any of the other teams. And I, I stand by that. I think that the Browns defense has been great. An incredible game from Miles Garrett. Yet again, three sacks in the first half. He's entering himself into the defensive player of the year conversations yet again. And he probably should win it. If we're being completely honest, he's having a much better year than 
TJ Watt, who is the, for whatever reason, the odds on favorite right now. That doesn't make any sense to me. Miles Garrett has been better by every single metric. Um, Their defense is playing well. And Jameis Winston is a quarterback that is maybe the most hot or cold quarterback in the history of the NFL. But he, he brings some life to this team. This team has some energy. And they pull off a big in-division upset win at home against the Steelers. And Jameis had a really good game. He had a great game. Uh, I, I like this team. I think they've still got pieces that they can win some football games and be a competitive team down the stretch. They're obviously not a playoff team. And I talked about the bottom 10 teams. I think everybody knows who they are. Which order do you put them in? That's kind of the big question right now. I got the Browns jumping up two spots. And uh, I got them sitting in my number 22 spot. At number 21, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. They were on a bye this week. Really hard to really understand what this team is right now because the upside is certainly there. The offense has been maybe the best unit of any group in all of football. With the way Joe Burrow is playing, I think he's been the best quarterback in all of football this year. I think you've got an incredible play from Jamar Chase, who's been one of the top receivers. T. Higgins is back, and he looked awesome against the Chargers before they went on by. The run game with Chase Brown has been effective. The offensive line, I think, has been – the interior has been up and down, but overall I don't think it's been a bad offensive line play. It's the defense that's been a major concern all year long. They aren't able to really close run gaps. They aren't really able to create pressure outside of Trey Hendrickson. And the secondary, time in and time out, just seems to have these stupid mistakes in the worst possible moments and loses them games. Cam Taylor Britt, we talked about it last week. He's becoming borderline unplayable for this Bengals team. And yet I can't quit this Bengals team because that offense is so good. They could win their next six games in a row. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. And I still think they can get into the playoffs. I'm not ready to rule them out as being this late season push team because the talent is there. The offense is clicking. Can you get good play consistently from the defense? That's kind of what we're waiting to see on. I got him at number 21. And then number 20, we got my Indianapolis Colts dropping one spot, falling to five and seven. Just a terrible game defensively. The the Lions are, I mean, the Lions are better than I thought they were going to be um, coming into the year. That's part of it. But the Colts defense really couldn't do anything. They actually created pressure on golf. Laotu Latu, shout out to him, had a really impressive game. He got good play from Buckner, but Missed tackles, blown coverages. The linebackers were awful in this game. The defense really let him down. But the big issue here is it's the other players on the Colts letting Anthony Richardson down. And I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but just go look at any person talking about this game. Anthony Richardson for the second straight week had a really, really good game. And I know the numbers aren't going to show it, but He had a touchdown drop that would have been a walk-in from Andrew Ogletree. Threw an absolute dime to Ashton Doolin, who just completely forgot he has to get two feet in. And then he had gains of 7, 30, 41, I believe. He had major gains in this game that were negated by penalty. He had a good game. He was dealing in this one, and it ultimately didn't end up mattering. That's going to be the big issue. Uh, It just was too little too late. The the area I need to see improve – The offensive line has been a complete mess. Quentin Nelson had arguably the worst game of his entire career. Aline McNeil and DJ Reader just absolutely cooked this Colts offensive line. Granted, they had three rookies starting with Matt Goncalves, Dalton Tucker, and uh, Tanner Bordellini. That's not acceptable. You don't want that. But I thought I, I expected them to lose this Lions game. I think the next five games are very winnable, though. You've got Jacksonville, you got Tennessee, you've got the Patriots, and then you've got Cincinnati, or you got Denver, and I'm and you got the Raiders. You got five really winnable games. The Denver game is what it's all going to come down to for me. They dropped the spot just because I think the Dolphins raised up a spot. And this Dolphins team has been a team that has really turned a switch the last couple of weeks. A game against the Patriots, where some people were saying they might be on upset alert. And they've dominated this game. I thought Tua has looked really good since he's come back. He's looked comfortable. He's starting to get a little bit more consistent. And the receivers are making 
plays. Jalen Waddle had a good game. Jonu Smith last week. The big establishment with this team is their ability to run the ball. Devon Achan is turning into a legitimate threat for this team, which is really exciting. And I think that we, I don't think we've seen them play anybody that I'm like, okay, let's see them against this team. But Thanksgiving night against the Packers, that's going to be the game to really watch because you're going into Lambeau. It's going to be cold. It's going to be on prime time. If they're able to win that game, get to 500, this team could definitely steal one of those last wild card spots in the AFC if things go right because this is a good football team. They're definitely turning things around. They've really impressed me the last few weeks on both sides of the ball. And I got them sitting at number 19. I think they're doing a nice job. And um, yeah, I, I like the way this Dolphins team is playing as a whole right now. At number 18, we've got the Atlanta Falcons. Now I know what you're thinking, JWAC. Why are the Falcons dropping two spots when they didn't play this week? I, I, I just, the more I think about this Falcons team, the more concerned I get. Also, there were two teams that I thought jumped them in the power rankings this week, and that's really what it comes down to. This Falcons team, I think, is maybe the, the worst team above 500 this year. That's the best way I could put it. I, every week, they're in a close game that they barely squeak by in their wins, and when they lose, it's not pretty. Their last game we saw them was against that Broncos team. Bo Nix absolutely lit them up. The issue with this team, they don't have a defense, and that's going to matter. This team needs a defense to win football games because Kirk Cousins is good. Your offense is good. They're allowing teams to score at an alarmingly high rate, and when you're not able to stop them, you're putting more pressure on the offense, and I don't think they're going to be able to keep up uh, throughout the rest of the season. They're a fine football team. I think the offense is exciting. They've got some big play machines. But until the defense can have a statement win, I don't really see this team going anywhere. I think they're an easy team to just pencil in as that noon that noon game uh, on wild card weekend, and they're going to be the first team out of the playoffs. I don't think this team's that great defensively, and that's why I got them dropping two spots. I, I, I'm a little worried about what this team is going to turn into. At number 17, who would have thought that coming into this season, we would have the 49ers at number 17, a little over two-thirds of the way into the year. I mean, a crazy season so far, but they've been the most dis- one of the more disappointing stories all year round because the injuries just continue to pile up for them. Week in and week out, it's like, okay, who's going to play for them this week? Brock Purdy and Nick Bosa are out against the Packers. This is a must-win game for the Niners. You have to win this game. If you lose this game, now you lose a tiebreaker to the Packers, which it could come down to in the playoffs. Like, you might need that win. They sit out, get absolutely destroyed against this Packers team, and they're. I think they're done. I think their season's over. And the reason I say this, you can look at the schedule, which it doesn't get easier for them, but – Look at the look at the tiebreakers right now. Seattle has a tiebreaker over them. The Rams and the Cardinals all have tiebreakers over them. They're at the bottom of this division right now. I, I don't see the, a way that this team turns it around. You might get healthy. You might get Purdy back. But McCaffrey has not looked like himself. I know he had the injury and he's come back. He's played three games. He hasn't looked very good in any of those games that he has played in. You don't really have a consistent weapon. Debo, he's not a consistent number one. That's just not who he is. You're asking way too much of Jawan Jennings. And outside of Nick Bosa, I don't trust anybody on this defense to create pressure consistently, especially with Javon Hargrave done for the year. I'm out. I'm out on this 49ers team. I think their season is over. And after going to the Super Bowl, I think they're going to miss the playoffs entirely. At number 16, we got the LA Rams. I don't know if this team's good or bad right now. I give them a tiebreaker over the Niners just because of that head-to-head battle. But yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to make of this team right now because at times this offense looks explosive and dangerous because you've got a really great quarterback in Matthew Stafford who I still think throws maybe the prettiest ball in all of football. You've got the receivers that you've got. You've got a defense that's playing well. And 
they just weren't able to really do anything against the Eagles. I think they are like lacking a true space heater in the middle. I, I think that's kind of the issue that I think that they could uh, look to address. Kobe Turner, Brayton Fisk, they're good. I don't think those are run stuffers, though. I think you need a true like nose tackle type of guy for this team because I don't think they're going to be able to stop the run very often. They haven't been able to much all year. You go back to that Dolphins game. They were able to run the ball. You go back to that game last night. Saquon has the best game of his career. So I think those are the big issues. And I, I think – there's just some struggles from time to time. The offense at times hasn't felt like it's been able to gel all the way. They're fine. I still have them at number 16. I think they're dead in the middle of the league right now. They've been good. I don't think they've been great at all. I'm kind of waiting to see on them, I guess. I, I don't feel great about it. I don't I, really the next six to seven teams going back to the Falcons, including these. I don't really know where to put them. So it's kind of just vibe check, I guess, on how I'm feeling. The Rams, I got at 16. At 15, I got the Bucks. I know that the Bucks have their game, basically two games behind in the division because the Falcons have the tiebreaker. But if you look at the remaining schedule for Tampa, it gets a lot easier from here. I think there's a legitimate chance that they can take back this division. Baker Mayfield every week just continues to prove why he's one of my favorite football players of all time. The toughness that he plays with and just the swagger he plays a quarterback position with. He's incredible. And he's having a really, really good season for Tampa. And they finally got their team healthy again. The corners are getting healthy. Mike Evans is back. And the difference that Mike Evans makes for this team cannot be understated. Yes, you beat the Giants. Uh, yeah, you but you dominated this Giants team from the opening snap, the way you were able to run the ball. Very interesting. A lot of people were talking about this, that, um, that um, uh, Bucky Irving, he out snapped uh, Rashad White for the first time this season. I don't think that's nothing. I think Bucky Irving is turning into a legit dude for this team and both the receiving and the rushing game. He's been a big difference maker for them all year round. And I really love this Tampa team. I think they're playing good football. They're getting healthy. I've got them at 15. I think that this team is going to be a good playoff team. If they can win some of these gimmies that they've got coming down the stretch, I think they can get into the playoffs. I really do. I've got them sitting at my number 15 spot. At number 14, we got the Washington Commanders. I'm starting to think the Commanders aren't a very good team. Seven and five, if it's not for the Hail Mary, they're six and six. And the Hail Mary, as much as Washington fans want to talk about how incredible that was, it's one of the flukiest plays that you ever are going to see. I don't really think that's a great vibe check on this team. They dropped four spots. They've lost three in a row now. And look at the teams they've lost to. You lost to the Cowboys, Eagles, and Steelers. Two of those are respectable. The Cowboys one I think is unacceptable. One of the worst special teams days you're ever going to see. I mean, just brutal from what they were able to do. Um, missed field goals, missed tackles, the whole nine yards. That was a disaster. Defensively, I don't think they're that good. And I think offensively, you're really starting to feel the lack of a legitimate offensive line and a legitimate number two receiver. Terry McLaurin had the big 86-yard touchdown, which gave Washington life. But outside of that, I felt like they were – the offense was pretty stagnant most of the game, and they weren't able to really get anything going all day long. So I do have some concerns about this offense. And if you look at Cliff Kingsbury's success, the first half of the season he's usually red hot. Second half of the season he's usually not. So take that as you will. I'm a little bit worried in that uh, regard if I am a Commanders fan. But, I mean, you still feel good about Jaden. You still feel good about some of the some of the rookies that you've got. And you got a good coach, I think. But I, I, I'm, I'm not really sure what to make of them. And they got a game against Tennessee next week that if they lose, it could be pretty, pretty detrimental to their season. So I got them sitting at number 14. At number 13 – we got the Houston Texans. They drop a spot. And I've talked about this the last few weeks. They're this year's Eagles. They are last year's Eagles. 
I've talked about this really since the beginning of the season. I thought the Texans were the most overhyped team coming into the year. I thought they became the media's darling because of what C.J. Stroud did. I'm like, well, sophomore slumps exist. And I didn't really trust the Diggs acquisition. He's hurt now. The defense is the I, – I, I'm going to quote my guy Marcus from that franchise guy. He said, they are the worst good defense you're ever going to see. Because the defense is good. Eight sacks against the Titans you feel really good about. Five interceptions against the Lions you feel good about. But when it matters, I never feel like they're going to get a stop. And they cannot continue to allow these big plays. Every single week, they're allowing a big play over the top, a big touchdown, a long play. It can't keep happening. If I'm a Texans fan, I am furious that this continues to happen week in and week out. Joe Mixon was a complete non-factor in this game. And now we'll talk about C.J. Stroud, who – where are we ranking him in terms of quarterbacks this year? 13, 14? He's been a massive disappointment this year. I mean, turnovers, the timing with the receivers has been way off. The offensive line has not been very good. I understand that. But he's also just not making good decisions when under pressure, which he has done his entire career. I mean, the accuracy hasn't been as good as it was last year. I don't think enough people are talking about this because, yes, they're 7-5. and five. The Colts are two games back. But the schedule for Houston does not get easier. It doesn't. They've got a game against Tennessee and Jacksonville. Three really, really tough games, though, coming up. Uh, against They got a game against Kansas City. They got a game against Baltimore. I don't feel good about those if I'm a Texans fan. This team has got to figure some stuff out because I, I don't think they're going to be – a team that I'm worried about come playoff time with the way that they're playing right now, particularly offensively. They're 13 because they're still scoring points, and I still think they've got some pieces to make a difference, but I'm worried about this Texans team. I feel the same way about them that I did last year's Eagles, and I've been saying it since early on in the year. They feel pretty fraudulent to me, and that's why I got them at 13. And number 12, I got the Arizona Cardinals just dropping a spot. I really don't know what to make of that game. We'll just reveal number 11, and I've got Seattle jumping up six. On the Arizona side, bad decisions by Kyler Murray and key situations that ended up losing them this game. The offense wasn't really able to move the ball consistently, and that was kind of the difference maker. Usually they're able to run the ball effectively. Seattle did a good job of stopping the run. I I think they are kind of – they're getting healthy on the defensive side of the ball, and I think that's a – Great sign if you're a Seahawks fan. Back to the Arizona side of things. I'm not putting too much stock into that game. This division is really, really weird. I still think this is a good football team. They're a game above 500. I got them at 6-5, and five, number 12. I still think I'd rather be them than the Texans. I'd rather be them than the Commanders and every other team we talked about. I, I think with the way that they've been playing, I feel good about. My only worry the Darius Robinson situation is getting a little weird. It seems like he's scheduled to play every week and then he gets scratched. Scheduled to play, gets scratched. He's got to get on the field. They need some consistent difference makers on the defensive line. And I don't, th- don't think they're getting that right now. They definitely didn't get it in this past game. And I got them at number 12. At number 11, we got Seattle. And I'll tell you this right now, I don't think Seattle's the 11th best team in football. There's no way. But with the way they've played the last couple of weeks, I think you kind of got to respect it. You beat the Niners and Cardinals in back-to-back weeks. Their offense is good. I don't think anyone's denying that. Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think I'm going to – this is a controversial thing I'm about to say. I think he's taken the wide receiver one mantle from DK Metcalf with the way he's played the last few weeks. He's been awesome for them. They've gotten great play from the secondary this year. Tariq Wolin, Kobe Bryant had a good game, and Devon Witherspoon is – continuing to prove that he's one of the five or ten three to five best corners forget five to ten I I don't know what to make of the Seattle team do I think they probably get in as a wild card yes I also think Arizona probably gets in they're probably going to win this division if not Arizona I think they're a playoff team but do I think they're a playoff team I'm uh, worried about probably not but you never know things can happen I think the defense is starting to get things figured out as well 
Uh, they're holding teams. They've hold, held the Niners and Cardinals to very few points the last couple of weeks, which I feel pretty good about. But we'll see. I've got them pretty high this week. I've got them at number 11. It's the highest we've ever had them, but we'll see what they're able to do. I got them at number 11. At number 10, we got the Denver Broncos. I'm I'm getting into this Broncos team. I, one of these weeks, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move one of these and put up the Bo Nix. We got Bo Nix sitting up there because Bo Nix. I mean, I I I don't remember if I said it on here. I had the receipts somewhere. I could pull them up. But I said coming into the year, I felt like Bo Nix was going to have a C.J. Stroud type of rookie season. And a lot of people are like, oh, whatever. He's 25, 26-year-old rookie. The Broncos don't have any weapons. Forget about it. What Bo Nix is doing right now, I think he's taking offensive rookie of the year. Right now, if I'm voting, I think he's got it over Jaden Daniels. Team is better. I think the body of work, what he's done, I think he's got 19 touchdowns to two picks over the last eight weeks. Early on in the season, the conversation was, can Bo Nix make enough plays? Because his defense is playing really, really good football. Can Bo Nix make enough plays to where they they don't need him or they, they can rely on their defense to win games? And it was like, eh, I guess, I mean, he's got some issues. Now it's like, okay, well, we can win because of our offense, not in spite of. This offense can win us games. Cortland Sutton is turning into a superstar. Devon Bele has played really, really well for them. And they're finding ways to get Marvin Mims involved in this offense as well. Really, the big issue you're going to have is the running game. I don't really think they have any consistency there with Audric Estime, Javante Williams. Do you feel good about either of those guys? No, I still think they could be in the running back market early on in the 2025 draft. That being said, the defense is playing really well. Uh, they're creating pressure. Nick Benito's having an incredible season that's going way under the radar right now. You just hope Riley Moss is okay. But I, I'm blown away with what Denver's been able to do. They're 7-5. and five. They're playing really good football. And I got them at number 10. At number 9, we got the Minnesota Vikings. I have no idea how this team is 9-2. and two. They find ways to win games. They're the real black magic team this year. We talk about it with the Chiefs and the Steelers. The Vikings, you look at their last four or five games, nothing really stands out. You you got by the Packers in a game that you won by like three points. You barely beat the Bears. You beat them by three points. You barely beat the Titans. You barely beat the Jags. I, I don't really know what to make of it. On the other hand, though, you're getting great play. Sam Darnold had a really good second half overtime period late. And Jordan Addison had an incredible game. He He's really uh, burst onto the scene. And I think you're getting good play from the defense still. I don't really have any notes otherwise on this Vikings team, to be quite honest with you. They're 9 and 2, but I'm not really seeing anything that's like, yeah, I got to jump them up. They've been really impressive. But I'm not seeing anything that's like, ah, I got to drop them down. I got them at number 9. I think they're a tough team to play because the home atmosphere, the defense, they might not even win the division. So we'll see where it goes. But I got the Vikings today at number nine. At number eight, we've got the LA Chargers staying where they're at, at seven and four. A lose a tough one to the Ravens. The final score is not really indicative of what the actual game was. Herbert was a bit up and down. Hurt that J.K. Dobbins went down earlier on in this game. They weren't able to really consistently run the football like you would want them to. And that's kind of been a big staple of this offense is the way they've been able to utilize play action and play off of J.K. Dobbins, who's been one of their best players all season long. Offensive line had some issues. Look, the Chargers are going to be fine. You went up against a really good Ravens team, but there are still some issues to be worked out with this team. I think defensively, you've gotten good play up front from Puna Ford and Tui Pelotu, but they still need a defensive tackle. They need a long-term solution up front. Tui Pelotu is viewed as more of a 3-4 defensive end, not really a nose stop or a, a nose tackle run stuffer. And I still think that's a need for them. Uh, the Ravens had over 200 yards rushing on them in this game. So got to figure that out. But I'm not worried about the Chargers. I think they're going to be fine. I've got them staying where they are. At number seven, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Uh, dropping four spots. It says five. They dropped four from three to seven. Falling to eight and three. Russ is having ups and downs, which we've come to expect with Russell Wilson at this point. That game was weird. The weather was weird. You would think that would play into the Steelers' strengths. It did not. I'm starting to get worried about TJ Watt. He's not been great. I think he's not really getting sacks like he normally does. And he's not really making a difference like you would expect. They're getting good play from Nick Herbig. He's been a great piece for them defensively. But I don't really have many notes here. I think what I will say, George Pickens, you got to stop fighting people. I mean, it's getting old at this point. Every week, he he has to be the biggest diva in the league right now. Fighting Mike Sanders still, fighting Greg Newsom. I mean, I, I don't get it. I, I really don't. I'm not worried about the Steelers, but I think I think I jumped the gun on them a little bit last week, put them at three. I've got them at number seven. At number six, we've got the Baltimore Ravens staying where they're at. Um, yeah, I, I mean, what's there not to say about this Ravens team? You're able to run the ball better than you have been able to. Justice Hill has the big run. Derrick Henry's got over 100 yards. Lamar's running the football. It's all great and happy in Baltimore. Also, the big pass to Bateman in this one. The offense was clicking for him. Against the Chargers defense, that has been really, really good this year. The Ravens defense, or the Ravens offense, was really able to get things going. I thought the secondary did a pretty good job. Marlon Humphrey got a good one. Yeah, this Ravens team is about where I thought they'd be. They're 8-4. and four. They're looking really sharp, really good. We'll see what they can be come playoff time. That's when the real issues start to show up for this team. But I got them at number six. Didn't really see anything in this game from, from either side of the ball to really justify moving them up or down. And I got them staying where they are. At number five, we've got the Kansas City Chiefs staying where they're at. People are going to be mad, but ha- you shouldn't win by three points against, against the Panthers. You're supposed to be a Super Bowl contender. You don't lose by three points to the Panthers. I like the Panthers. I think they've been good. There's issues with this team that I don't think people are wanting to really acknowledge. And it, The defense didn't play well. You've got decent play from, from uh, uh, Xavier Worthy and DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, they played okay. But, like, you still don't feel great about this team. They'll probably, like, sneak their way into the AFC Championship game where they'll probably have home field and something will go their way. But, yeah, I mean, I I didn't see anything in that game where it's like, yeah, that team, I I was wrong. I think they need to be higher than five. No, I I don't. I I really don't think they do. I, I have some concerns with this team right now. And I've got them sitting at my number five spot. And number four, this is where it's going to get controversial. I got the Packers at four. I mean, Jordan Love's not even playing his best football right now. He didn't have a great game against the Niners. And it didn't matter. This is the weird part. Usually, last year, this team won because you were really excited. Jordan Love was off the charts. This year, it's different. Love is up there at the top of the league. I believe he's tied at the top of the league for interceptions. And it's not really mattering right now. They're they're getting great play from Josh Jacobs, who's third in the NFL in rushing, which as a Josh Jacobs fantasy owner, it doesn't feel like he's doing this week in and week out, but he is, and he's playing really, really well. Uh, You're getting great play from Xavier McKinney. He is going to be one of the top. He's been one of the top guys in the league. I think he's on a short list of like defensive player of the year candidates right now. With He just is always getting turnovers and interceptions. He's an all-pro without a doubt. Um, we got we got Xavier McKinney right up here. I, I, I really do think they're getting great play all around from everybody. But where are my issues? Can Jordan Love be more consistent? Can you get one of these receivers that step up? Dobbs went down with a concussion in this one. Christian Watson is maybe the most inconsistent player in the league. Can that happen? Because if it does, I think my Packers Super Bowl bet coming into the year looks a little bit better. And I'm not selling that stock. I still think there's a world where that hits. But I got them at number four. I think they've been playing really good football and they're flying under the radar right now. At number three, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. Saquon Barkley should be MVP. That's really all I got to say about this team. I mean, 
everything's going right for this Eagles team, and it's different than it was last year. I mean, Nick Sirianni, ever since he shaved his head, they haven't lost a game. Big surprise. Um, I, I've been really impressed with, obviously, Saquon and the way they've been able to run the ball, but this defense and Vic Fangio, he has figured something out with this group. They're creating pressure up front. Brandon Graham, unfortunately, he goes down with a torn tricep. You hope he's okay long-term. Maybe this is it for him. Uh, but Jalen Carter and the linebackers and the secondary. Quinion Mitchell is a stud. I love that dude coming out of Toledo, and he is continuing to just play at an all-pro level as a rookie. I mean, this team's really, really good. I think they're definitely turning themselves into a legitimate contender that I was not expecting coming into the year based on how last year finished. So I feel really good about this Eagles team right now. I got them at number three. At number two, it, I forgot to put the equal sign here, but they are at staying where they were last week. Um, and yeah, they were on a bye. Great time to have a bye. You beat the Chiefs last week. You get to go on a bye. Josh Allen's playing incredible. You've got weapons for him everywhere. The defense is getting healthier with Matt Milano coming back. They're able to create pass rush. I love this Bills team. I think they're the best team in the AFC right now with the balance that they have in their offense with the run and the pass. I think Josh Allen is playing incredible. I love this Bills team, but they're they're not better than the Lions. And I don't think anybody is. I mean, I talked about it. Every time the Lions needed something, go to a screen pass. Get the ball in a Jameer Gibbs' hands or David Montgomery's hands. Jared Goff, his accuracy wasn't very good in this game. He missed Laporta a few times. Laporta didn't have a very good game. But it didn't really matter. And then up front, like, they were able to create a push. Aline McNeil is a superstar. He's incredible for this team. Zadarius Smith has been a big addition. I mean, this Lions team is so, so good. And they stay at the number one spot. Go to 10-1. and one. Um, they've been awesome and they stay at my number one team. But that's going to do it for me in this one, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? We'll love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.